of some IMI. We would like to begin by thanking you all for being a part of the 17th edition of the Marketing Conclave. Before we kickstart the panel discussion, Cookieless Future is it bright or bleak? We'd like to thank our cloud communication partner, Root Mobile, our session partner, IV Tech Lab in partnership with Umatic, our gold partner, Logics of Digital, session partner, Agra, bronze partner, Bobble AI, and a knowledge partner, Kenta. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our esteemed speakers. Mr. Shantanu Siroi, Founder and Chief Operating Officer, Interactive Avenues, who will be moderating today's discussion. Alex Cohn, Vice President, Privacy and Data Protection, IEB Tech Lab. Shashank Shivasa, Senior Executive Director, Marketing and Sales, Maruti Suzuki. And Mr. Tejinder Gill, General Manager, India, the Trade Desk. Over to you, Mr. Siroi. Thank you. Thank you, Munmeet. And uh, I am a firstly for uh, a fantastic four-day uh, mark, mark on that's happening. And uh, welcome, panelists. Hello. Alex Shashank and Tejinder, glad to have you on board. Uh, so this is this is a hot topic. I was I was looking at some of the other uh, uh, discussions happening as well, and uh, even when they, they, they talk about data, everybody's talking about cookie less and what is it that's going to happen when uh, that entire thing, which is deferred now to 2023, comes about. Uh, a lot of uh, myth and reality on what really is going to change and what is going to benefit, who's going to benefit and how. So uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm missing uh, Vandana from Google here today, but uh, who, who could have talked about, uh, uh, because Google does have a large, large part to play in how privacy and cook, the, the thing about going cookie, cookie less, one of the biggest uh, reasons for that is uh, data and privacy and consumers and consumer protection. Uh, so instead, maybe I would open the session with uh, Alex, who sits on the uh, IAB Tech Lab and has been doing a lot of work in uh, the area of data and privacy. And specifically, Alex, in your opening, if you could, uh, you know, talk us through what some of the walled gardens and by walled gardens, I mean, Google, uh, uh, Facebook, Amazon, uh, the, the, the big play, Apple, the big players. What, what's their take? Where are they on consensus? Are they really moving in different directions or will we have consensus in the way we need to move? Oh, wow. Yeah. So good question. And thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm glad to speak with you this uh, today, this morning in New York, but uh, I realized this afternoon where you guys are. So um, the way that I conceptualize what the the platforms or the the walled gardens as sometimes they're referred to are are doing is they're making a distinction about privacy in a very specific way they're saying that you know privacy is best protected if they can eliminate cross site or cross app tracking not tracking altogether so the, the idea of the third party cookie is the third party cookie was the sort of link between sites um, online to, to recognize the same user across sites, across time to maintain state on a user. Uh, mobile ad IDs, right, or do the same thing effectively. And what, what at least Google and Apple have set out um, sort of as their line in the sand on what, what privacy means is we can, we can deliver better privacy if we end cross-site, cross-app tracking. So the, all the things that they've been doing, so that the deprecation of the, the third-party cookie is just but one piece, right, of that puzzle. So there's also being discussed right now and even happening on some platforms like, uh, you know, Apple's Safari, um, obfuscating IP addresses, which could also be used for, you know, cross site sort of measurement tracking, um, and basically any sort of surface area that allows for, or might allow for being able to recognize the same user across sites that even actually extends to email. Um, they have proposals. Uh, so Google has a proposal in Chrome, um, used to be called web ID. It's now called fed CM, uh, federated credential Man management that is effectively trying to create what's called directed emails, meaning sort of step in the middle of a user entering their email into a form and actually switching it into 
something that's specific to that site that then the browser would keep the main email private and, and basically do what, what some, you know, e-commerce sites will do where they'll create some sort of directed email. So the point is that the summary is what I think at least two of the walled gardens are doing is focused on what, the, what they would say is ending cross site, cross app tracking through all manner of means, not just the cookie. And then you have companies like, like Amazon, maybe Facebook, um, but, but companies with large user bases um, that effectively were always walled, meaning you as a marketer, you probably couldn't track outside of them. Uh, you, you needed to use their data. Uh, if you, if you used your data, you're, you're onboarding it through some sort of clean room. Um, and they're, they're continuing down that path. I think probably doubling down on that path, honestly, and are, I, I would say are probably likely to see more advertising spend because, you know, the, the more audience that you have on your domain or in your app, um, the more likely a, a marketer can go scale an advertise, advertising spend, right? So the, a lot of these changes and how they're framed is, is cross-site is bad, but it's totally okay to track on, on one site. Um, it, it's very beneficial to any company that has a large audience and an advertising business model um, on, on site or on app. So I, I realize that's a lot, but it's, you know, I think it's, it's good for people to know that it's not just the deprecation of third party cookies that's sort of on the table. It's like Apple, Google, um, I, I expect other platforms even to follow suit, removing what I would call the surface area for data collection and activation across sites, across apps. Was that, was that more than you were looking for? <laughs> Op opens up a whole bunch of uh, questions, yes. And uh, while we're on that, I quickly come to uh, Tejinder before we go to Shashank to get the marketer's view. So uh, Tejinder... Uh, Actually, uh, you're straddling both worlds because there's trade desk and you have your plan B. Uh, Walmart, let's not talk too much about that. <laughs> that's, that's a close beta. But uh, okay, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in this entire thing of uh, the cookie-less future, there is uh, an industry-wide uh, uh, initiative that uh, trade desk has been pioneering and spearheading for now, the you know, UID 2.0. Uh, so do, do, do you want to talk uh, us a little through what, what's the thinking there and what's the kind of headway made right now? What's the eventual promise? Yeah, sure. Uh, Shantanu, thanks for, thanks for having me here. Um, I don't know if, if, if audience is aware about the trade desk, but as you know, we are a global tech company uh, and we help basically marketers to make smarter buying decisions in the most uh, effective and efficient way uh, using data and intelligence, right? So data is the key. Um, the good thing is we are independent, objective, and open, right? We're transparent, uh, you know, work with everyone. Um, you know, before we go to Unified ID 2.0, I think I want all of us to probably take a step back and think, like, where did it all started, basically, right? Um, I think as an ecosystem, which is, like, you, us, right, a lot of other partners from ad tech industry, I think we never did a great job of explaining the value of exchanging the value exchange of, you know, what is a cookie, I think we always go put up a you know privacy page of 10 pages and every website a pop-up comes and we ask users, hey, please accept. I don't think so any one of us would have ever read it. Like we want to browse it, we just accept it and move on. But the core value exchange, right, which should be communicated very, very clearly to consumers is that targeted advertising funds free content, right? And if you look at three core principles of internet, I would say, which has been there for the last uh, three decades is consumers want access to free content. Like that's why they browse internet. Like marketers, like, you know, uh, you know, brands like Maruti, they want to showcase relevant brand messages to their target audiences, right? That's their uh, purpose, right? And publishers, like any of the publishers you pick up, they all want to make money, right? They want to monetize the content. So, you know, these are the three core principles. 
And then we need to communicate very clearly that, okay, targeted advertising funds, great content. This is what needs to be communicated, uh, you know, to the consumers. Now, what, what I think if cookies disappear, what will happen is the targeting will become less effective, right? Which means the efficiency of media will go down eventually, right? That will in turn make marketers to pay actually more for the same inventory for the same stuff, right? Because everything will be hard. And, and, and the core problem we guys are addressing is like, you know, there's a unifier, universal identifier, which is which is actually missing today in the Internet. When I look at the future, I think there will be probably three or four scenarios which can actually pop up. Like one is either one or two walled gardens control everything, which probably was the case previously. Or the entire content actually goes beyond paywalls. Like, you know, if you have to browse any, let's say, NDTV.com, like, the only way to consume content might be, you know, you pay and then log in. Third is consumers might have to log in at multiple places every time. We all browse like on an average 10 to 20 web pages today, right? So you have to log in with your credentials every time. Or we all come together, which is or the independent group where we work together to do the right thing and make a solution which works for everyone. Like no, no individual company should control it. Like it should be a governing body who should have it. And that's where entire unified ID comes into play right uh, it is basically a string of numbers and letters which cannot be ever reverse engineered to an email address right and i think uh, if you think about a, a, a initiative like unified id 2.0 it will basically help marketers to measure and compare effectively across all channels and one important point is i think cookies are you know active in in a typical website or mobile web kind of environment right if you look at some of the newer channels which are coming up right across the globe, CTV, um, OTT, uh, you know, uh, audio, like cookies don't even play a role there, right? I personally feel like we don't need to worry too much about it. Like in a typical country like India, I think our uh, browsing behavior is like 20% of our internet browsing happens through desktop, right? Rest is moving already towards like newer channels. Uh, you know, with, with the entire Unified ID 2.0, we all want to make a better uh, you know, I would say identifier for the future. Like, you know, it's a good news for the industry that, you know, time have come where we can now think and we should go and adopt for a new identifier. Uh, and third, which is the most important part is that marketers should be able to effectively, you know, uh, target their audiences in a more, I would say, privacy safe environment, right? But keeping consumers at the forefront. And I think that's what we, all of us want, right? Like if we wear our consumer hat today, uh, we, we we want to be safe at the end of the day, right? Whether it's our payment transactions, who we are, we want to protect our identity. But yet we are open to to consume content, right? Like a simple thing is, uh, you know, you go to a, that's a baby store and you literally leave your phone number there in that diary today. That's, that's exactly what probably a first party data is. But you've left that number because probably you want to receive some great offers for your baby. That's it. It's as simple as that, right? So you have consciously written that phone number in the in the in the notepad of that store, saying, "Please contact me whenever you have great offers for my baby." Um, so I think this is where uh, you know putting things uh, from a consumer's lens in front will be the key for the future. Um, sorry for sorry for the long answer, but I th thought a little background would be helpful for the audience. No, uh, not at all. Uh, thank you, thank you for that. I, though, though I do think. There are two aspects there. One is interoperability being the key, and uh, how 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 successful we'll be there is something to be seen. And when 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 you leave that number behind uh, in the baby store, the number of SMSs you'll be bombarded with is something that you were not ready for. So again, uh, the the consumer is not always uh, you know totally in sync with what they signed up for. So uh, having said that, coming to uh, Shashank, uh, as, as Maruti being the largest car manufacturer in the company by far and uh, the industry itself being such where there's a whole lot of, uh, you know, the customer information that's already available and, and some of the new initiatives that we've seen, not necessarily towards the marketing, uh, marketing, as I said, could probably be a byproduct uh, benefit there but around suzuki connect etc what's what's the marketeer's view on uh, on this entire uh, future being cookie less and what it will or will not allow you to do 
Yeah, Shandanu, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, having me on, on, on this discussion. Um, you, you are very right. Uh, actually, uh, automobile usage is uh, a, 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 and, and, and ownership is a high involvement um, phenomena in the sense that, especially in India, it's uh, probably the second largest uh, product, uh, product by value that you buy after house. So um, there are also, since it's very high involving, it just doesn't end with sale. There is a whole lot of other things after sales, including the usage. And what you refer to in Suzuki Connect is about the usage of the car. So we have now the technology, the connectivity, the, the edge uh, computable, com computation ability by which you can actually track the usage of the vehicle itself. And that has been done mainly uh, for consumer, better consumer experience. So it's largely been done for uh, product improvements. We know now how many times the customer breaks, how many times he accelerates. We know how, uh, how, 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 whether his fuel is running out or not. Uh, we know exactly. In fact, there are now we have AI uh, based technologies by which we can track uh, retina movement of the driver. And you can actually tell whether the driver is distracted or is drowsy. And that's something which is great for consumers to know and be alert about. But I think what the discussion is referring to, we have, of course, a huge, you said that we have almost 50% market share and uh, we have sold up more. We have more than 20 million customers, actually, where we have continuous data availability. They do financing, they do uh, refinancing, they do insurance, they do accessory purchase, they come, they come for after sales service and so on. So the whole thing is, how can we use this data for other things than just product improvement or giving great consumer experience? It's basically about communication with consumers. Uh, so whether we have new products or whether we uh, want to in influence the consumer, consumer, if I can say that, uh, in marketing terms. And this cookie-less uh, world, uh, uh, which you are referring to, obviously affects marketers in a big way. Maybe it doesn't affect as much to us because we have a lot of first-party data, as I just explained. But it's going to affect the marketers in many ways. First of all, I think uh, the transformation of the data management itself will have to be there in this world. So in, in this cookie-less world. For, uh, you know, you, we didn't have uh, notions of uh, consumer consent uh, earlier. We have it now. So we have uh, to build those systems, the technology by which you can track and, and uh, different types of consents that you have taken. So some people might opt out. You need to track them in a different way from some other ways by which you, uh, you know, people might have uh, opted for tracking, like the example with the gender uh, gave. As that is one part. The other part is, the brand performance measurement, those systems which exist today depend a lot on those third party cookies. Those will be uh, sort of gone. For example, the uh, post, post view uh, attribution or uh, for example, uh, uh, granular audience reporting, um, those are all uh, will, will probably be uh, severely impacted. Uh, cross channel reporting, for example, multi touch attribution, the MTA. Uh, even A-B testing will be a little difficult. So those things will impact. But I think the most important part from my perspective, from an automobile perspective, as a marketer of automobile, is the audience activation, which is that uh, we will uh, things like uh, behavioral targeting or display retargeting or reach and frequency management, all those will have a dramatic change for the marketers. For example, we have... We will have fewer opportunities of, uh, of ad personalization. Now, that's uh, actually uh, a, a huge thing from a marketing path perspective. Uh, we, we also would lose the cross-platform, uh, you know, the frequency capping, which we do. So you will probably have to bombard on many platforms of marketing uh, all the communication that uh, you need to uh, do. And we have to leverage and balance that uh, with, with respect to the, uh, the, the marketing spends probably it will be difficult to have uh, measurements of ROIs the way we used to. We need to modify the marketing KPIs itself. So a lot of effect on us. And of course, the biggest one is legal compliance itself. So that whole uh, process changes, especially now that we have new laws in India, uh, where we uh, need to uh, look at uh, our entire uh, legal uh, compliance systems. 
and I, I, I even when you mentioned Suzuki Connect, we sometimes, you know, in India, we are uh, we do monitor the driver behavior very uh, thing. Many of us have drivers, uh, uh, unlike uh, you know, in 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 more developed countries where the manpower is much more expensive. So we do monitor. Uh, uh, so while it the asset may be mine, and I may have given a consent for data to be transmitted from my asset. But whether it applies to the user of that asset is not so, sh I mean, the laws are still not very clear. So you might uh, wrongly uh, saying that uh, Shashank, uh, since uh, at since 10 o'clock, he has been doing nothing but switched on the AC. And he is probably, you know, you can actually make out that he's browsing YouTube. But actually, it is my driver. The driver, am I violating the privacy of the driver? Uh, I would also like, and I do track, uh, use Suzuki Connect to track my daughter's usage of my car. I have, uh, you know, teenage daughter and I am very careful. I am wanting to know, uh, is she over speeding? Um, so those are things which uh, are, uh, of course, the, uh, related to the product uh, usage, uh, privacy, legal compliance. But more uh, importantly, uh, as I mentioned, consumer and audience activation is something which we are looking at. And as we progress in the discussion, probably we can discuss what things we are doing to, uh, you know, overcome these challenges, which I just mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, insight, Shishan. Every time my drivers drop me to the airport and instructions are you don't go over 60, I've always wondered on the way back how fast you went. <laughs> There's really no way for me to figure that out. Uh, at the risk of uh, Maruti knowing a lot more about me, I'm, I'm sure finally the uh, payoffs towards me are going to be much better. And that's data I don't mind sharing. Uh, uh, that's on the lighter note, of course. Uh, Shantanu, we know a lot about you. <laughs> <laughs> you you worry about your drivers over speeding. I, 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 we have data that you have been over speeding too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shashank. Guilty as charged. <laughs> so the, one of the things, and Alex, maybe uh, we could again start with you uh, on, on this one. In terms of uh, creativity and innovation, with all of this coming about. So two, two questions, a little disparate, but I'll put them uh, both up. One is, uh, what is going to be the impact on innovation uh, the way we know it in terms of so there's this, uh, the, the entire uh, country right now is talking a lot about a Cadbury ad, which has happened where, uh, you know, using AI and uh, there is a celebrity giving personalized messages to every individual, depending upon the location and so on and so forth. Right. That's the epitome of when we are saying location aware and uh, surrounding aware kind of creative, right. And it's getting the accolades, but things like that are going to disappear. So coming back into marketing, is it going to stifle creativity? And and how yeah. much of that is good? Because everything seems to then go behind. You, you have no way of, uh, you know, do, doing stuff like that. So is it going to stifle us on that front? And the second related, which I mean, uh, I, I shoot straight from the hip, which is uh, if 70 to 80 percent of these spends anyways are in the big platforms or wall gardens, however we want to call them. Uh, with this, is that going to go up even further? So it becomes, you need to be a part of uh, one of the platforms and then the future is good. Otherwise, with the same feature sets, etc., you're still outside of the big boys club and you do not get the uh, ad dollar. Yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, two sure. very good <laughs> questions. Impressive, I'll start yeah. with the innovation question. I think, you know, there will be opportunities, I think, in pockets to innovate, meaning what Shashank just described, right, like is his company's ability. And there's other companies who, who have sort of scale of of data that they're able to collect and probably enough marketing budget to go direct to different, you know, media companies, publishers to activate innovative campaigns sort of directly, right? Meaning like, 
hey, I can go to to the biggest biggest news sites or the and 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 use the fact that I have a lot of money to spend, um, and I have a lot of data that I would like to activate on this this site or app for an innovative experience for an end, end user that actually like might be something that the user really likes, right? <laughs> like or, or finds interesting or cool. Um, I think. So that I think that will still happen. The question is, is like innovation at scale across a lot of entities, meaning like of, of entities of all sizes and sort of abilities, both on the on the the kind of buy side of the equation and the sell side of the equation. Today, because of I guess the ubiquity of of cookies and mobile ad IDs and IP addresses on some of these new new devices, like that being the only kind of uh, universal identifier, there is a lower barrier to entry on. Hey, let's try let's try something innovative. Um, so I think innovation at scale may become harder, uh, and and across at scale, both in in size of like a a buy, but also um, more so in the, the number of, of companies who might be able to do something innovative. Uh, the other, the other point I'll make on innovation is, you know, not everything has been decided yet, at least on web. Um, so the, the proposals at W3C at this worldwide web consortium, where they're talking about Google's privacy sandbox, they're still kind of in testing phase and they are taking some feedback. And interestingly, there's other companies like Microsoft has put forward counter proposals. Uh, there might be, <laughs> well, so if, if things go forward the way that they've sort of been laid out in privacy sandbox, it really only allows the browser to innovate, right? So the browser is the one now sandboxing kind of control over what ads use cases and ads APIs are available. Interestingly, Microsoft has a counter proposal that says, what if we created some sort of new layer, but like outside of the browser, but maybe not pervasive in ad tech, but some sort of new layer to develop new privacy enhancing technologies that maybe more entities could actually, you know, put, put in new code or new ideas to like a, a trusted sort of server that might run different use cases, right? So that, that are meant run on like sort of private privacy enhancing math. Um, so the point is on that side, like current course of the way that at least web is going, the browser is probably going to control all the APIs and therefore the allowed use cases at scale. There are some counter proposals that say, let's open that up a little bit. <laughs> and not just have one or two browser companies deciding what use cases everyone uh, can, can achieve. Um, so, so it's possible that, that you, you know, we might see something different come out of this sort of privacy sandbox process. On the second question of like, does spin sort of aggregate where it's already aggregating? Probably. Um, I think, you know, people talk about, e-commerce companies like Amazon, what they can offer at least to, you know, is, to a lot of types of companies, maybe CPG companies, um, is sort of like all on one site buyer journey, right? So from discovery to adding to cart to purchasing, and they do that at scale, right? Whether it's Amazon or some other e-commerce company that has the ability to serve ads like recommended products. I think that, you know, I think you may have referred to the Walmart bit earlier with Trade Desk. I think you will see a lot of other companies trying to recreate that. And what I'm excited about is that they're going to try to recreate that on tech that's independent. <laughs> um, uh, you know, in the US, we have Target that I think is also trying to do that. Um, I think they're, they're using some independent tech solutions. So while I do think some of these changes are going to result in more spend just concentrating in some of the, the traditional walled gardens that have a lot of ad tech, 
I do think a lot of retailers in particular are looking at what say Amazon is doing and maybe trying to recreate it themselves using technology that they purchase as opposed to their own homegrown technology. And, and I think that might mean spin con concentrates there too, but at least there, there's more opportunity uh, for, you know, a marketer to, to say, well, I'll put some into Amazon or, you know, th those types of uh, sort of e-commerce experiences. But then there's, there's some other places that have scale that I'll be able to go to that the buying sort of levers are in, in a platform like trade desk, or they're in a platform like Critio. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, there's, <laughs> The net of this is there's going to be a lot of change. Uh, I think we're in a massively dynamic time right now. Uh, it's it's actually really good to hear Shashank like as a marketer being aware of like what the dynamics because I think some marketers are, are are less aware of like what's actually changing. I, I'm actually really interested to hear how they're they're preparing for all of this because it sounds like he's he's really been thinking about this, and I, I would encourage more marketers to that, think. that's exactly where i was yeah. heading from here i wanted to quickly go back to shishan and say that tejinder spoke about uh, the the efficiencies going down we talked about some other stuff so now what at, at maruti spe suzuki specifically what's the thinking how are some of the effects of uh, the cookies uh, getting depreciated and going away uh, how is it that uh, maruti is preparing for that future yeah, so we just uh, discussed uh, how, uh, you know, it is affecting uh, the audience activation, the engagement, yes, yes. especially especially if you look at the uh, acquisition focused campaigns of ma marketing that uh, we have. Fortunately, uh, you know, in India, 50 percent of the uh, uh, consumers uh, of cars are first time buyers. Um, uh, the rest are uh, actually uh, additional car buyers or, ex or uh, replacement car buyers for whom we have a lot of data because most likely they are our customers already. Uh, so uh, uh, the thing is that we have a lot of transactions. We did mention that in a car uh, purchase, even after sales, uh, we have a very good system and which we are still evolving, of course, of creating that uh, big data lake that uh, we put in all our data, both transaction and by the way, interactional data as well. So transaction data are for consumers who already are in touch with us because they're using our products or our services. But at the same time, all for those people who are not yet our customers, that interactional data also we are capturing and putting because that's also a first party. So first thing which we, are, uh, we have realized is let's not depend too much on third party. Let's uh, have the first party data. We are in a unique advantageous position to have. Uh, we have already that data and let's try to make sense out of it. That's the first thing. So first party data, we have to build our own this thing. We, we are now looking at um, building a customer data platform uh, as the CDP, where we will have after stitching all the data, transactional, interactional, a single view of customer. So we know exactly. So it's sort of personalization, sort of personalization, but build entirely from first uh, uh, first party data, which is the thing. The other is that we are also looking at the legal aspect. Uh, we have to develop a consent management platform, which we are doing, uh, a CMP as we call it. And what is required by law to have a DPO, which is a data protection officer, uh, where we examine whether we can, how we can use this data. And I was giving you an example of Suzuki Connect, whether we can use it, uh, that data for individuals. Uh, uh, like telling them uh, uh, for, for their experience, uh, how they're using the car or use it for design, in which case we can't use an individual data, but use cohorts. So we have an a DPO, uh, which is very important, I think, from a legal point of view. Third is, I think we also have, we are going for, uh, for, for active second party data tie-ups. And I think that's what marketers also would like to do, which is like in our case, mobile service providers, uh, financial institutions, 80% of the cars in India are uh, on, on retail are actually financed. So banks have a lot of data, uh, even two wheeler companies because they upgrade to used cars. We are in used car business as well. So used cars and then they upgrade to the new cars. Uh, petroleum companies, because, uh, you know, uh, we, we know how the consumption of oil or gas or lubricants, etc. is. That's the third thing. And finally, I must say, we have also realized 
and this is something which i must tell our marketers although i am also in the learning uh, phase that a, we have to explore a cookie less world uh, in terms of addressability uh, it's not as if uh, the third party cookies and it does not mean that 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 means there is an end of audience uh, based uh, targeting it it doesn't mean and i think uh, alex referred to that uh, tejinder also did about world gardens because they there what they have is uh, Uh, they have their own ecosystem uh, it's a closed ecosystem but uh, yes if we can uh, get in get, get get some sort of a, a type it's it's a good world for an advertiser because the data is uh, and about the consumer is really good clean and current so that is something which is uh, the other way the, th- the, the the other way of exploring uh, addressability is what we call contextual uh, targeting and contextual targeting is something which is i believe uh, essential for people like us because um, uh, uh, whether it is you know targeting those websites or advertising in those areas which have got in our tg a higher affinity for example uh, for autos it is uh, mainly uh, in india gc news sports those are the three main high affinity areas so those are something which if you have other types of contextual targeting examples non auto i can give also one like if on a rainy day you see an ad which is about sunny weather in somewhere a holiday destination so that is also some sort of a contextual based on geography and weather rather than on the individual itself um, and of course what we call fingerprinting which is um, you build a probabilistic model which we have actually which is uh, you know uh, using a lot of meta the, the metadata i was referring to and build a targetable profile which means that uh, use cdp uh, that data lake put all the data do analytics let the machine uh, tell us so we have use uh, uses of ml and ai which will tell us uh, give us a model which helps us um, you know to uh, to to uh, target uh, consumers even if the, it is based on 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 a cohort basis so as the as we get more data as we do more of this learning the ml helps us through the process itself is going to help us make the model better and that's what we are trying to do uh, in this cookie less world which we are expecting in the future of course one last point i mentioned earlier which is the adoption of new hybrid performance monitoring for whether it is your uh, marketing campaigns or uh, you know we need to have uh, new because in the absence of uh, the cookies it might be a little diffi- difficult so we need to look at our kpi measurements of marketing very closely so those are the things which we are doing and sorry uh, sorry for the very long uh, uh, you know no not, not 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 all shank it's it's not it's not long the uh, the preparation is robust and happy to hear that now uh, Tejinder, I'll get. Uh, so I'm now going to do a cron- contrarian scenario, right? Let allow me to paint that, and from there, and we'll start with you and get everybody's response to that. So there, there were the good old days. There were maybe a one or two TV channels, and there were a few newspapers, and you could do the advertising, and everybody who had to know about your product knew it. Okay. I'm I'm just being contrarian, guys. Don't shoot the messenger, right? I'm just building a scenario. <laughs> from there. came this cookie and everybody from from that nice mass advertising where you could reach out to everybody it came all the way down to now obsessing over this one person and what is the messaging and what is it that i'm going to do to uh, to convert and all the a disproportionate part of your effort is going there now seeing seeing that extremes are always bad so is the cookieless world kind of going to somewhere balance things out because think about it if ferrari was to advertise only to the guys who are going to buy their car right they would not need to have all that content or all that exciting things and whatever else right the the reason those 100 or 200 people in the world buy the ferrari is because there are billions out there who believe that that's the epitome of uh, you know buying a car so uh, and 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 chance especially uh, it's not just auto but uh, imagine if we were to say oh we will target only males because uh, that's that's where the things are and we'll target only a particular age group because that is where my buyer is 
but the wife is a bigger influencer than you can imagine the child is a bigger influencer that you can imagine and marketers sometimes have gotten so myopic that they've forgotten about the benefits of spillover please reaction starting with uh, tejinder yeah sure so uh, great great perspective shantu and uh, on a lighter note probably i can share a story with you right when i was at linkedin probably 5 years ago and there was this premium auto manufacturer who sent out a brief to me and he said tej why don't you target people who are c suite on linkedin uh, works in large enterprise companies with employee size of 10000 plus and work in cyber city and i was like then that might be just six ceos honestly and why do you want to do, do a digital campaign i can hand over literally a pamphlet on there to go to their office and deliver it like you don't need a digital activity for it and and i loved your perspective right yeah like there are these are the two extreme corners and extremes are always bad right i think somewhere the solution lies in the middle and you know i feel there's no silver bullet yet right and nobody has a right answer per se to okay what will be that one perfect solution but the solution should be something which is in the beginning you said interoperable flexible open not controlled by a governing you know an individual party and puts puts consumers interest in the in the front seat right somewhere in 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 that package i would say would be the right solution for the future um, and and if you look at what pandemic has done in last two years right like i think uh, i was in, reading an interesting analysis right 70% of the time is actually getting spent on open internet which is a newer channel so people have started watching ott and which is actually a reflection of old age tv right um, uh audio streaming right which is a reflection of radio like you and i were used to listen to that radio for one hour of our drive in the morning now it's gone over uh, online news right like you know which is newspaper you know my dad has moved from a reading a newspaper to an online press imagine all these are newer channels right of consumption who knows what will change the game in like next 2 to 3 years um very interestingly you know we, i was having a dinner with somebody and we said hey can somebody click a picture of this um and there was a guy who actually set up a timer through his smart watch and put it on the phone and picture got clicked and i was like wow like you really don't need a human guy to find okay can somebody click a picture it's like super automated and there'll be newer ways of technology to to make everything as industry standard and if you look at the cookies perspective also like i think we as brands publishers ad tech like we all made it our industry standard actually right and now if we all think together that okay we need to find an alternate solution i'm sure I, i i think we will be able to find a a common currency which works for everyone right like starting from a tech company to a publisher to shashank to us right everyone which is which is more convenient for the future right and we don't need we, we, we should not think of one year two years but like what will work for next 10 years uh, right 20 years because cookies i called it that like you know uh they're like of a donkey age right like you know many years ago we founded it we are probably using it for the wrong reasons now but i think time has come where we can reinvent the wheel and make something even more beautiful uh which lasts longer yeah fantastic uh, shashank i think our minders are here they will very, very soon tell us we are running out of time so quickly yeah, your, yeah. your your reaction to this i was thinking whether alex would like to shoot you but uh, now that you have asked me to pull out the gun so let me do that uh, actually it's all about uh, which part of the marketing funnel you are operating in so i completely disagree shantanu if you say that all marketers are looking only at this cookie based uh, solutions for marketing and communication not true for the upper part of the funnel you still require a lot of say, where you don't need personalization you gave the example of ferrari i see ads of ferrari i am not i'm sure i'm never going to have enough money to buy a ferrari but i would still the the fact that i desire it uh, makes it uh, you know good enough for alex to actually buy it because uh, he knows that somebody is desiring it but not able to purchase it that adds to the desire so you need to communicate that's a consideration set which is the middle part and then the digital cookie based real personalization comes at the lower end of the funnel which is when you have the conversion i hope i have shot you chantanu oh, oh you have you have shot me so well shashank and uh, remember i said don't shoot the messenger i'm i'm just this is my job today um, okay. alex i've been shot so well i'll not allow you to react to that but uh, maybe get in your point on something else which is equally important now regulators right so and 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 as iab it would be interesting to get a perspective iab is a well respond uh, well respected great uh, 
body in the US, uh, done stellar work. I've personally followed it for over a decade and a half. Uh, but what about the regulators? In the US, they're thinking differently. The EU seems to believe, all right, let's put in another $2 billion fine. And that's, that keeps our uh, fires burning. Yeah. Uh, in Australia, they'll do something else. So how is there ever going to be consensus? We, we spoke about the uh, bigger platforms, but what about the geographic con consideration? Then I'm not even saying China. Honestly, I'm not uh, equipped to comment on them. I have absolutely no idea of how and what they do. Uh, but uh, yeah. how, how do you see that play? <laughs> Man, they're... There are just so many challenges. <laughs> um, we've just talked about one of the largest challenges and then add on top of that the fact that, and, and Shashank had mentioned it earlier, but that the regulatory landscape is is also rapidly changing. And, and I think, honestly, some of the changes that we're seeing from the platforms are driven by the platform's view that we're going to have so many different regulations. Why don't we just do something more, which is just like shut off stuff all together. What we're trying to do, and I'll, I'll be quick because I know we're about to get cut off, is really acknowledge that there's going to be different regulations in different places and try to build technical standards to support flexibly the needs of different markets. So uh, Shashank mentioned CMPs, like the signaling that CMPs need to send out to the rest of the supply chain to let the supply chain also know what's what's been consented, what hasn't been. That's something that we're working on right now. And yes, it's. I think it will remain fragmented for a while because that's how the world is set up, right? The world is, yes, we're a global world. The internet has enabled sort of global communication, but there's still the laws of the land are specific to land. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, Unfortunately, I think we're going to see more fragmentation before we see consolidation, but we're we're trying to be pragmatic from the IAB Tech Lab side and say, what what can we do to, to support things the way that they are right now? And then, you know, but also be able to adapt to a world maybe where there's more consolidation in the regulation, but I'm not holding my breath. All right. <laughs> I think... I think that sums it well. Uh, Manmeet, do we have time for a few, uh, a couple of questions? Or Yes. Uh, so uh, we have a few questions coming. Um, we can probably address one or two and, you know, then we can close the session. I think some of the stuff got addressed already. Uh, but uh, there's, there's one which says that open web is a bit of a misnomer. It's just for companies. It's so big, it looks open. I'm, I, I'm, I personally, I'm not so uh, sure about that. It's not cartelized like that the monetization engine maybe right but uh, it's not that uh, you you have a voice the the to my mind the web is as open as it can be but i'm, I'm willing to uh, have uh, uh, the opinion from any of the panelists on this who'd like to go it, the way that i think about it is and i realize this is this is a very this is probably a very american device i don't know um but at the end of the day, there's a lot of there's a lot of websites and apps that I can get to through this thing. But the device that I hold in my hand, the thing that I'm talking to you through right now, which is my laptop, that is pretty. Uh, that that is that there is not a lot of companies who are building operating systems and browsers, um, and operating systems and browsers have been leaning into more and more control that the app store with apple is just continues to yeah. exert its control so there's an open web on the other side of that right like and and but you have to pass through right the gates of of the operating system or the browser to get to that open web so that's kind of what we're seeing right now is that yes there is an open web i don't think that's a misnomer it's Will the gatekeepers, the browsers, and the operating systems, the open web, make rules for the open web that that effectively suffocate innovation? We'll see. Yeah, yeah. That that's what we that's what we need to prevent as a body collectively, as uh, uh, people in the industry. That's that's the thing that we need to prevent. That shouldn't happen. And I'm and I'm a big believer in. Uh, Positivity and stuff. Uh, the cookie list future, to my mind, is uh, 
bright. It's not going to be bleak. I'm I'm hearing a positive direction uh, with, with all of you. Sure, lots of uh, ifs and buts along the way, but that's required to uh, to ensure that it is as uh, as as uh, transparent and open and honest as it as it can be. Yeah. Well, uh, that's the end of the session. So uh, thank you so much, everyone, for such a wonderful discussion and for sharing your insights on Kukilis' future. And I'm assuming is yes, it's bright at the end of the day. Uh, thank you so much once again. And thank you to all our attendees for putting out such interesting questions. Stay tuned for the next session. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.